Will it play a tune? Now I've used several things to try and level, or not level, but check for track straightness. Lasers, you know, like this, other lasers, string. The thing with the laser is you just can't see in daylight, you can't see the dot at the far end, so it's really hard to align. See, that says three inches there. The problem is you have to set it three inches way down there and you won't be able to see it. So you could try string. The problem with string is it sags and then it also uh, blows in the wind quite a bit. So this time I'm gonna use piano wire. This is what's in the books, the old time books on how to do this. So we're gonna give it a shot. I think it'll work great. Somehow or other, I need to get the carriage down to the other end to be the best place. So right now the carriage is well past the the blade. So even if I were cutting a 20 foot log, which I can do, I really don't care about the track past the spot right here because the carriage won't go that far. We only use this end just to unload and that's about it. So that's one reason I'm pushing the carriage back to this end. I'll work on the part that's most important. I thought we'd just try this and see if the camera can see any straightness issues before we even string a wire. Now, I, I predict this be, might be somewhat of a nightmare coming out of this box, but we'll see. All right, there's plenty of room under the axles and the carriage and all to fly free all the way. I need to rig up something at this end. the strap I should be able to tension that wire as much as I want. It's really stout wire. You can you can really wail on this. 
So then, well, this is a different kind of track, but my idea was you could just go like that. Boom, that's three inches. Let's go down to the other end and see what that is. Actually, I'm gonna do this slightly different than I showed before. I'm gonna go with a caliper to the outside of the rail. So we'll set it to three inches. Then I'll move this over to three inches. Let me go down to the other end. I need to set it to three inches also, and then I can run down the rail. So what I'm seeing with this wire is uh, there's a dip in the track, a swale. Uh, it's actually pretty straight, but it's got a bit of a swale there. Now, since it's cutting really square, I don't know how I'm gonna deal with that or if I'm gonna deal with that today, but I am gonna run down and see how I am uh, but one thing I'm doing, what, one thing that's happening is it's because of that swale, the carriage, there's a bolt on the carriage that's hitting the wire. So I think what I'm gonna do is jack up the carriage a little and just shim it up so that that wire goes free through there. Okay, so what I did is I threw away the last 10 feet of track. That's what I said I was gonna do. And so I set my elevation at 10 feet in this way. Well, that straightened out everything here. Now, at the entrance to the blade, I'm about a quarter of an inch off, which I'm saying if I move this end of track this away, quarter of an inch, well, we'll fudge around with that, but basically this way, then I move this point, that straightens out there, and basically what's happening is this is, uh, this is a little bit this away. So we'll try that and see how that goes. So this should stay at three inches. Well, it didn't, but that's easy to do. I just moved this over three inches. I actually wanted to check it in here a little bit because there's really no support for this. It could be bent or whatever. So we go three inches in from here. Okay. I went the wrong way. I should have gone, should have gone that way. So I'll check my three inches here. I'm goofy. It's like a half inch off now. So let's try this again.
and go check the other end. And that had wiggled off, so. Well, I was better before, so I gotta work, I, I gotta work both ends against the middle, and then I'll come back. Uh, I went back and forth and back and forth, back and forth. So I would say the track is straight within 50 thousandths uh, to my mark, which is about 10 feet from that end. The carriage is well out of the blade at that point. So we'll tear that down and start on the next measurement. I brought a MIG wire spool to spool this wire back up so I wouldn't get in all sorts of trouble. Well, that should do it. I'll put it in my kit. Okay, now that we know that the track is straight, uh, what we need to do is run the carriage by and every head block we need to check to a reference point and see that they're the same. And last time I just totally wild guessed things, didn't even get out a tape measure. So, we use this one tooth that I already marked, and I'll probably set this at 10 inches here. And we'll see how the, we'll see how the others are. So there's 10 on the inside. How all the work begins. I got to move this thing back and forth. Same twos. And we're like at nine, nine and fifteen sixteenths. And this is uh, it's like nine and thirteen sixteenths. So I need to make this nine and fifteen sixteenths. I can adjust this one, adjust the left one. I can't adjust the middle one. So we need the the two outside ones to match the middle. So I got to loosen that coupler and move this that away. 3 sixteenths. Okay. So I always want to I'm back off. And now I'm like at 10 and 3 quarter because I moved it back, which I always move a head block toward the blade to take up the lash in the ring and pinion. So, let's try this. <clears throat> Nine and 
15 sixteenths. Tighten my coupler back up. Sixteenth that way. So just like the other one, I gotta, I gotta go back and then forward. So, I'm going to check it all again, but also, I'm going to check lead. Lead is how aggressive the saw angle is to the plane of motion here. We want to call it that, I guess. So I do that again with the one to the mark tooth. I already actually know my, my distance here. And we need to move the carriage this way. So I'll, I'll rotate the blade around and check the same tooth the other side. I ensure that my guide, there's two little wood dowels there that act like a guide for the blade, basically keeps it from wandering if you hit a knot or something. Anyway, make sure it's not touching on either side. So the blade is standing on its own, not being influenced by anything. So, I might have a sixteenth elite. I can tell from the way it sawed before I was pretty happy with it. Okay, so now I'll continue checking these again. I noticed when I came back, when I came back through the second time, this was nine and seven eighths. So I actually set that at nine and seven eighths. This is still nine and seven eighths. I'm gonna come back and set this to nine and seven eighths. Seven eighths. So I would say all three pass by the leading edge of the saw the same distance. So really, that's it. So I have to see how it saws. Mm -hmm.